Hi everyone, Rock the Knee Stone Tano here. There are a handful of things in Deep Rock that I'd say just don't get enough praise. And one of those things just so happens to be the music. Deep Rock Galactic soundtrack sits out about two and a half hours of music, and that is a lot of music. That's like a Chris Brown album amount of music. Made up of two volumes, the Deep Rock soundtrack has a consistent style that it deviates from just enough to make each track compelling and memorable, which is something I can't say about a Chris Brown album. This is my video on the music of DRG, how it came to be, and some of the highlights in the track list for me. We'll start from the beginning. In early 2016, Ghost Ship Games was just a team of six, and none of them were really feeling they would be able to create a soundtrack. Luckily, the news of this newly formed company spread to Sophus Alf Erbeck Larsen, who is the nephew of DRG's game director, Mikkel. From a young age, Sophus had already been trying to convince Mikkel to get him a job making a soundtrack for a video game. And uh, I, I, when I was, like, especially when I was a teenager, I'd always been bugging him, you know, at the family dinners or something like that, birthdays, you know, get me a job because I love the gaming world and, and such. And he's always been like, I can't do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it always, it always bugged me. And then uh, when he told me about the next project they were doing, I, I just figured, I'll just make some music for it and then I'll just show him and then he'll have to say yes because it's, it's gonna be awesome, you know? <laughs> After making some songs and showing them to Mikkel, Sophus convinced him and the team at Ghost Ship Games that he was the right choice to compose the soundtrack. With Sophus on board, he was told to go in an 80s synthwave direction. Stuff like Terminator, the works of John Carpenter, like stuff from Prince of Darkness, and Dracula 2000. One track that convinced them that this was the style of music they wanted to go for was the main theme from the 1982 film, The Thing. With the music from The Thing in mind, Sophus returned to the team with Into the Abyss, which is the first song on volume one of the soundtrack. After this track, they thought it would be a good idea to work on more upbeat music to play during swarms. And this is where the first swarm song comes in, Attack of the Glyphids. The rest of Volume 1 sticks to these synth-heavy and dark sci-fi roots that inspired the first two tracks they've made. Throughout the runtime, it seems they tried to follow two rules. One, the soundtrack should stay consistent to this synth-wave style. Two, they should also feel unique in their own way while sticking to this style. Volume 1 contains 22 songs with a total runtime of 101 minutes. There's a huge amount of music here, and it's all pretty great. One track that comes to mind first for me is Fathomless Tomb. Throughout the runtime, this song evolves quite a bit. They use this single note in the beginning to kind of emulate the sound of a sonar. This is in an attempt to make you feel like you're somewhere very deep and dark. While I find this use of sound really cool, my favorite portion of this track starts about three and a half minutes into the song. I just love how this portion sounds. I would describe it as like ethereal and atmospheric.
On the topic of songs that are atmospheric, we have The Descent. It creates an amazing atmosphere with some inspiration from The Cure's song, A Forest. I'd say the best part of this track is the last third of it, which sucks, because it's on loading screens, so you never really hear this last part. It ends with this echoey, reverby, almost dystopian synth melody that sounds so nice with the bass behind it. This one is peak 80s synthwave. While I love both of these songs, I don't think any track on Volume 1 can beat Robot Getaway. I love the buildup and the lead synth of this track so much, it always gets stuck in my head. To me, this is like the deep rock song. Also, Sophus said this was one of his favorite songs he made. Robot Getaway actually is one of my favorites. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember making it. I was sitting, in, I, had, I just listened to some hip hop or something, and then I just decided to, I, I, w I would like something that really kicked. There are many other great songs in the track list, and I really recommend giving them a listen outside of the context of the game. Also, the track Principle of Darkness being a fun word play on Prince of Darkness is pretty fun and clever, I, I do like that. Before 1.0 launched, I was pretty content with the music that was already in the game. I hadn't really thought of them adding more music until it was set on the roadmap. So when I saw it was on the roadmap, I basically thought, that's an odd thing to update, but I'm interested. And five days before the release of 1.0, they teased some of the new music. And one of the songs they teased was this. Listen, I, I really love volume one of this soundtrack. But Volume 2 is on a whole nother level. I think this mostly has to do with the focus on making things have more variety. We'll start things off with track 1, Welcome the Darkness. This song is like a dwarven spy theme inspired by Mission Impossible and it's great. I feel like I'm going on a dwarven bank heist in space. And then right after this track we have A Distant Terror, which was created to play during Mactera Swarms. But they eventually dropped this idea of exclusive songs. This track is really catchy and also kinda scary. There's like a heartbeat-like rhythm that builds up to the lead synth, and it's seriously one of the best parts of the whole soundtrack. This song kind of sounds like the best score for your worst nightmare. On the topic of exclusive songs, there's also Absolute Zero. This track was going to be exclusive to the biome Glacial Strata. The soundscape this song has perfectly fits that too. They put in layers of bright chime-like pads that sound like they're sparkling and glimmering, along with this darker synth melody. It makes this perfect fit for Glacial Strata. It kind of sounds like something in Blade Runner.
One track I can't skip over is Dance of the Dreadnought. Inspired by Queens of the Stone Age, which is absolutely fantastic, this song is a riff-oriented and punchy rock track with some harmonica thrown in the mix. From a glance, I could see how someone would think this song is kinda out of place, but once you have it in the context of the game, I think it fits it pretty well. On volume two, I think my favorite extraction song has to be Follow Molly. It just kinda has the right feel for, like, extractions. About two minutes into this song, it builds into this crazy robot-sounding Daft Punk shit with, like, huge layers of dark, wobbly synths. It sounds like something from the highly acclaimed Tron Legacy featuring a poorly rendered Jeff Bridges. Then we have a well-titled track, Run, which is also what I want to do when I see poorly rendered Jeff Bridges. The most prominent part of this song is the spastic and in-your-face drums. Inspired by music from The Prodigy, it continues to add to this list of great swarm songs on Volume 2. Lastly, we have Axes Out. This is one of the more lighthearted swarm songs in the game, and apparently it went through quite a bit of changes because it just felt a bit too goofy for the game. In the end, I think it fits the game pretty well, and it has this catchy, bouncy synth lead that sounds like something from the original Plants vs. Zombies to me. So I don't really know what the overarching goal of this video is, I just kinda wanted to talk about the soundtrack and bring up my favorite songs. And also I wanted to see what other people's favorite songs were and kinda talk about it a little bit. From a glance, I feel like music seems like it isn't essential to a game, but it definitely is. Um, and for this being like the first soundtrack Sophus had made for a game, it is so good. My favorite volume is definitely volume two, but I still love the first one and it brings back a lot of nostalgia from early access days. So yeah, let me know what songs or volumes are your favorite and yeah, I I'd love to hear that. Thank you so much for watching my third video on Deep Rock. Rock and Stone. <laughs>